What is going on you guys? My name is Daniel and welcome back to the channel where we go everything mirrorless Canon cameras. Today we're going to be going over viewfinder settings that will help you use your Canon RP a lot better. Now while there aren't as many customizations that you can do to the RP, there are a few good ones to know about how they are relevant to other functions inside the mirrorless camera that you own. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below if you never want to miss out on future content that will help you use your Canon mirrorless gear. Let's dive into this. So while the RP is a very capable camera, it does have a few less bells and whistles to choose from, such as buttons and dials and switches that you can customize on the R6, R5, and R. And so in order to make up for this while you're in the viewfinder, to be able to move your autofocus quickly, the autofocus point, rather than pulling the camera away from your face, you're able to come into this set setting right here that is touch and drag AF settings. When you come into here and enable the touch and drag, you're going to be able to use a portion of the screen as if it were a joystick for the AF settings. So you have two options. One is absolute and the other is relative. Absolute will give you wherever you touch on the specific section of the screen in proportion to where the AF, AF focus point is and relative means that your screen whichever direction you swipe in the a uh, the autofocus will go in that direction so i enjoy relative and you can use this one is set up to the whole panel but i typically like to set it up to the bottom right hand corner so that my face isn't touching the screen and moving the af for me on accident so whichever one works for you i think that most of us are going to be going with the bottom right or going into the entire right hand side the next pro tip is going to turn off your continuous af, AF focus because this will drain your battery so much faster as your lens is constantly searching to get the autofocus it wants. The next section in the settings is going to be under the yellow wrench number four. The shooting display info is going to be your back screen and you can go in here and customize for which ones you would like to have toggled when you press info, info, info. I typically remove the back one because this is kind of a relic from the DSLR days and I don't enjoy having it in there. I never use this one because I don't find it ever useful. I enjoy having the information there. So I untoggle this one and leave these three. Another option here is to go down to the VF info toggle settings and this one, I it pretty much only allows you to use the ones that I enjoy. The R6 and the R5 have a few more options, but this one is plenty for your viewfinder. And vertical display on means that while you're inside the viewfinder, you're going to be able to, let's see if I can move this here. So it's vertical right there. And then if you move it this direction, it moves all the information to the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll see if I can't show you a better example of this. But pretty much all that does is it keeps everything oriented properly, whether you move your camera um, sideways or upright. The next thing up there is the viewfinder display format. This is the large and a small option. I enjoy these smaller options simply because it puts all of the information in white on the sides of the camera view so that it's not obscuring what you're actually seeing and it helps you to not miss out on either your settings that you're looking for or it doesn't obscure what you're actually taking the picture of. So I go for the display format number two. Then display settings auto. This means that when your face is up to the viewfinder, it will switch to the viewfinder. And when you move it back, it will move away from it. Then you can go into manual and set to the viewfinder only. So now only the viewfinder is on, if you can see it in there, which I will have to move it up to my face to make sure I'm pressing the right button. And then you can also toggle it to the screen only. So now it will only go to the screen in the setting so that it won't go into the viewfinder. This can be useful when you're trying to take pictures in a studio setting or you're only trying to use one hand or for those lower images and you consistently are getting your hand in the way of this uh, eye indicator. And so it will 
continue to pull into the viewfinder and that can be incredibly annoying. So that is how you set that. Whoops, I just set it back into viewfinder only. And the final piece for this video is going to be the exposure simulation. This is obviously just simulating the exposure that's normally going to be taken, and it depicts exactly what your image will come out as. The only time that you should be turning this off, in my opinion, is for studio situations and when you're accompanying a flash. It will slow down the flash's operations as it needs to bump up the AR. Mm as it needs to bump up the ISO after you try to take focus and just removing that extra step by disabling the simulator exposure will allow you to remove that extra step while shooting in low light with a flash. So this has been the viewfinder settings for the Canon RP. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below so that you never miss out on future content to help you use your mirrorless Canon gear better. Thank you for watching.